strangely enough, this is actually one of the areas that I remember the most from Tomb Raider 1, was jumping back and forth across this, this river. Was, it was uh, wanting to ramp sort of the... Um, because we didn't have nice save systems, pretty much. Um, if you died, it was you're going to be playing at least almost half a level, right, um, to get back to where you were. So jumping across the waterfall was just a way to sort of be kinder with the reset. So if you fell down the hole, basically it just dropped you into the waterfall. It's kind of like a little white, white water rafting <laughs> ride and sort of spectacular, and that was it. Which I suppose is different now because the, it's actually kind of crueler now to do that because uh, with safe points being so liberally scattered around, like having to actually ride all the way down the waterfall back into the original area is more of a punishment than just dropping people onto spikes. That's right, because we made the traversal up the waterfall so much uh, more intricate now. It is uh, a little bit crueler. Yeah. That's, it adds to the tension. <laughs> it does. <laughs> yeah. uh, and there, and at the end of the, uh, the cog puzzle, which we obviously changed, but still uh, left a little homage to the... Uh, the end of the passage up above the waterfall ends with a, a wall with cogs on it, which was the site of the original puzzle. Yeah. But we've henceforth moved it into the, uh, into the waterfall area itself. The Lost Valley is probably the most memorable part of Tomb Raider 1. And it's really funny because listening to people talk about it, a lot of people remember it being in a cave. And that was because you had really bad draw distance and it just sort of went out to black fog. Well, pretty much we only had one fog color, which was black. black. So, and we couldn't actually, even though we wanted to have sort of an open top, we couldn't really do it. I think actually it's black at the top. So it's as if it was night time or something, I suppose. It was supposed to be an outside area. And now it really is. Yeah, I mean, it looks, it looks quite a lot better.
So, yeah, T-Rex in the original, um, that was um, probably the most memorable bit for a lot of people, I think. Absolutely. Um, it was one of the early 3D games, and having a having that guy hove out of the darkness at you, out of the draw distance, was pretty frightening. And it was a lot of fun um, animating because... Uh, it was pretty much a, an instant death situation if you were underneath his mouth. He just bit down and shook you about like a like a little terrier or something, shaking out <laughs> his little, little toy. Uh, little legs would fly everywhere and then he'd spit on the ground and it was uh, all part of the fun. That kind of was the basis for um, always making Lara's deaths as horribly cruel and painful looking as possible in the first game. And now he's back and he's a good deal bigger than he was. And that sort of goes back to what we talked about a little bit earlier, which was that people's memory of things is different than what it was. We made the T-Rex originally about half the size he is now and ended up having to double him in size to sort of ramp up the feel and the intensity and make him scary and everything still. So now he's ginormous. He's a humongous T-Rex, way bigger than a real T-Rex would have actually been. Right, but that's all right. And then, um, obviously, adding in the kind of concept that you use the environment against him instead of just shooting him, because that was always the problem with the uh, TR1 bosses, was that we didn't have time to really do anything special for the fights against the bigger monsters. It's still just essentially just putting as much lead in them as physically possible and adding in the environmental stuff to this uh, seemed like the most sensible way to big up that combat. Waterfall area, basically um, entranceway essentially to the Lost Valley, was uh, definitely one of the more memorable bits, I think, that people... It's one of many places in TR1 where um, the obsession with putting things behind waterfalls was played around with. Uh, I like this idea of uh, looking behind waterfalls. Oh, wow, that's pretty bizarre, isn't it? So we actually hid, uh, hid the main temple where you're actually trying to get to is physically under, behind the waterfall, so... So the progression takes you out into, takes you beyond the point where you actually end up, if you see what I mean, into an area with more waterfalls. That's right. With secrets behind them too, actually. That's the way. That's exactly the way, right? Yes. Yeah, it was really interesting when we uh, went back and, and remade this area. We built it really close to the original scale of the, the room in Tomb Raider 1 and re the first time. And, and everybody that played it thought that the waterfall was too small. And it sort of gets at the point that when we're remaking something that people sort of are remembering playing, that their memory of it's different than the actual game. 
And so we, we ended up making the waterfall a lot bigger than it was originally, live up to people's expectations of uh, what it should be.